Okay, so now we're going to take a look at the chakra system and the fifth chakra, the throat chakra. Now, the chakra system revolves around prana energy, uh, also known in the Far East and China as chi energy, and known to the Japanese as ki, the ki energy. And it's basically your etheric, the etheric uh, aura of your of your body. You have the physical body, then you have the etheric body, and to explain this <clears throat> in a deeper sense, um, your your body is in your spirit. You have a spiritual essence, then you have your physical body, and the aura makes up that spiritual essence, and your body resides within that spirit, and you have a system of seven chakras and some people will say there's more than seven chakras okay so beginning beginning looking at the fifth chakra the throat chakra that deals with speaking the truth to activate the fifth chakra you, you would want to explain something about yourself or explain something about your life that is real for you or true to you it doesn't mean if it's whether it's not as true for anybody else around you, uh, it doesn't mean uh, you know anybody else can say that's not accurate, that's not real, and cancel you out. If it's your truth, it's your truth. So if you're speaking your truth, you're activating your fifth chakra. Most people who who place a lot of intention on, on working with their fifth chakra, the throat chakra, they also open up the sixth chakra, which is the third eye, and the seventh chakra which is the crown chakra, the pineal gland. Now, uh, looking into light protection and a feeling of, of um, spiritual essence protection around you, a lot of people will, you know, slowly breathe in and breathe out and meditate with a feeling of a light bluish white light on them. A light bluish white light, which is the same color that represents the throat chakra. Okay. And eating blueberries also helps to balance out the throat chakra um, that goes for any chakra any certain particular chakra that you're working on if you eat a vegetable or a fruit that is the same color then you're going to help to balance that chakra out right now going back to the throat chakra and speaking your truth a lot of what you're going to deal with is your intention intention is everything so if you're if you're speaking your truth if you're using your truth for an honorable purpose or um, a purpose that's that's to, to put harmony and balance into your life and into somebody else's life it'll go very far if you're looking to speak your truth to to uh, to so to speak to harm somebody or take something from that person the the spiritual essence of it might not be as strong it might not be as potent now everybody works each chakra the first chakra the root chakra there's people who primarily stay around that chakra for their whole life that's the chakra that handles survival and fear greed things of that nature and for people who are more centered on on the root chakra they're still you know they're still going to be speaking some truth in their life and using the throat chakra you know like an excellent uh, an excellent liar speaks a lot of truth somebody who is really gifted at lying and deceiving they put a lot of truth into their lie to make it very believable so there's people out there who are really good at speaking the truth but that doesn't mean that their intentions of it are as honorable as what you might expect Okay, so now when you're speaking, now when you're using the fifth chakra, the throat chakra, and speaking the truth, that's an energy you're putting out. You're putting out an energy into the universe. And uh, that's one of the most powerful chakras to work with because sound is vibration. And you'll see the Buddhists, the Buddhists are constantly working on their throat chakra. They're constantly doing ohms, they're expressing ohms and they're doing mantras uh, from time to time I've done channeling work with people I've done mantra work with people 
and I get them into a mantra where we'll say it together ten times, we are in the light, we are in the light, we are in the light. That mantra takes a vibrational hold of you, an energetic hold, and it's very transformative. So I would say that the, the fifth chakra is, is, is probably the most powerful chakra, just as powerful as the, the, uh, the crown chakra, the pineal gland, right? And now going back to chi and ki and prana, you also have the, the access of the kundalini energy. And you can see right here where it's showing you're working on your kundalini. And then you work your way up right here dealing with the heart chakra. Now you're working your way up. This is a flower right here. This represents super consciousness. So the chi, the ki, the prana, the kundalini, it all represents the vital life force. And then when you're working these chakras in balance with each other, now you're hitting super consciousness, the crown chakra, which naturally puts out dimethyltryptamine from the pineal gland. And the crown chakra gives people access into different realities, different dimensions. There's uh, indigenous groups down in the South, South American rainforest that will, you know, eat high or drink ayahuasca or smoke ayahuasca or anything else they can get to for, to, for that natural, for more of a release of the DMT drug, right? And that has to, ha I think, I, I, I know that has to do with higher states of consciousness, higher planes of reality, like you hear a fourth dimensional consciousness, fifth dimensional consciousness. I've even heard said that super consciousness spikes people to sixth dimensional consciousness. Right? So, that's just a little example. And... A lot of people who a lot of people who are active in doing research on the chakra system and they're coming out and they're talking about it you know you got the multimedia world now people are online speaking more truth wanting to learn more they're constantly working that fifth chakra that throat chakra and they're learning to put themselves in balance now one thing I've seen online is you have a lot of people who are coming online talking about their their empath empathic and that has to do with emotional intelligence. Uh, you have mental intelligence, which the academic world mostly promotes. In school, mental intelligence. What's your IQ? How much memory do you have? How quickly do you know your times tables? And that's all well and fine. A mental, you know, mental intelligence is very necessary. <clears throat> but emotional intelligence... Is, is, is stronger than mental intelligence. Recently there's been some studies that came out that talked about the heart and the brain and that the heart works with more intelligence than the, than the brain does. The heart communicates more with the reality uh, around the individual. Matter of fact, there's been people who've had heart transplants who've taken on the personality of the character characteristics of the person who the heart came from. Somebody would get a heart transplant and the person they were getting the heart from, that person might have mainly liked Chinese food. The, the receiver of the heart, the new heart, now they may more care for Chinese food than they did whatever, whatever their preference was before that. So the heart is, is, is a very powerful communication tool, more so than the brain. And so the people who are involved with looking into emotional intelligence and being empathic and absorbing the energy around them, learning by looking at people and feeling and stuff like that, those are the, the pe be the people who are going to be more inclined to working with the throat chakra, to speaking their truth. Somebody who isn't on an empathic type of, type of journey and looking to heal people and work with people, they're not going to be too too concerned with speaking a certain truth. They're going to be more concerned, like we talked about, with you know how how can I you know how can I uh, 
how can I get this money? How can I get this loan from the bank? Or, or will I have enough to survive? Will I have enough to do this? Will I? They're going to be more concerned on just survival. And then the sacral chakra, the, the second chakra, is more. And then pro, hold up, the the first chakra again, the root chakra, uh, again survival and whatnot, pr- procreation. It's very it, 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 the root chakra, the survival chakra, is very dependent on procreation. So in countries where people don't have a lot of food and and they're sick all the time, those are countries where people have a lot of children. If you look to poor countries. Um, who are financially, not necessarily poor, you know, in, in every way, but financially, what you would consider financially poor, those people have more children than the people who are more comfortable in the West. Why is that? That has to do with the root chakra, survival, fear, procreation. Now, coming into the second chakra, the sacral chakra, which, uh, that deals more with a sexual drive sexual energy right and so most people throughout their lifetime might not deviate too far away from the first and second chakra from the root chakra and the sacral chakra they might not ever have really a a necessary need to to speak the truth or you know be more involved like that but the people who do you know those are the people I feel this gets into the subject of past and future lives and reincarnation and these are people who naturally work down the root chakra or the sacral chakra in other lifetimes or they've gone through enough incarnations to have mastered that that dynamic to, to life and they're in a lifetime where they're more concerned with accessing super consciousness or you know working with a this sort of complex but working on, on the idea of timelines and Mandela effect and metaphysics and whatnot. So, okay, there you have that's that's the fifth chakra, the throat chakra.